so today I'm going to talk about the new feature in CDI 2.0, which will be part of the Java 8 uh, platform. Uh, I'm working uh, at Red Hat, so I'm the CDI spec lead. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, or uh, you can go on my blog where there are advanced posts on CDI, SPI, portable extension, and so on. And uh, you can find also me on GitHub. Uh, before I start, how many of you are already using CDI in the audience? Okay. Okay. So for the, for the people that uh, are not using CDI, so CDI is part of Java E since Java E6. Uh, it provides dependency injection to the platform. It provides an eventing bus, so you, you can uh, fire and observe the event. And the best part of CDI is probably the portable extension, which allow uh, addition of feature, third-party feature. Uh, and as CDI is integrated with Java, uh, portable extension is also mean to extend the Java, uh, the Java platform. So uh, we we have a lot of things to talk about. So we'll start with uh, the support of Java IC that we introduced in CDI two. Uh, we will continue with the activation of the request context. So I will explain you. Uh, what is this about? Uh, we also work on the enhancement of the event system in CDI2, interceptor enhancement. Uh, we had we had some um, uh, helpers like uh, annotation literal uh, and uh, the configurator API that helps you to create portable extension, uh, making your code less 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 verbose than it used to be. So let's start with the Java IC support. So. Uh, before CDI 2, there was no Java IC support uh, in CDI, but you, you, we are able to boot uh, CDI container uh, from the, the implementation, so weld the reference implementation as a way to boot, bootstrap uh, in AC, of course, and the same for Open Web Bin. So why did we uh, focus on this AC support? Uh, mainly because we have other spec around that want to use CDI and use it more uh, deeply. And they were um, uh, a bit, uh, uh, how to say, uh, reluctant to go further with CDI because they say, okay, on Java, no problem. But when we uh, are used on Java IC, because we are supporting Java IC, if we uh, rely deeply on CDI, we won't have any solution to. Uh, uh, to have the dependency injection and stuff like that. So it was the first goal was to make sure that over a specification and third party framework as well, uh, wouldn't have any uh, reason to say, okay, uh, it's a bit tricky to support CDI because we will be, uh, have only this support on Java E. And uh, if we go further on that ID, we try uh, with that to boost the CDI adoption, so the spec and also the framework. Uh, we can imagine third-party frameworks saying, okay, CDI can be used on Java IC, so we will add the uh, support to CDI because uh, uh, people will use CDI to, to create new stacks. So to add this support, we have to split the spec in three parts. So now in CDI 2, uh, we have uh, CDI core, so all the features that are uh, platform independent. CDI for Java IC, it's a small part dealing mainly with the, the bootstrap part, and CDI for Java IE, a big part. It was a, a long work, not very interesting, but very useful <laughs> to do, to uh, uh, split the, all the reference to AGB, Servlet, etc., and put it in the, in, the last, uh, in the last part. And of course, I think every, everybody uh, that used CDI read the spec, of course. No? Who read the spec here? Wow. Okay. Nice. You should. Uh, you don't have to read uh, all the spec, but you can grab a few chapters. Uh, it's rather well written in the, the spec, uh, uh, how to say, terminology and uh, organization. But it's very interesting to, to, to go uh, uh, into this document. So, Bootstrap CDI is quite uh, straightforward. 
we introduced uh, a class called AC Container Initializer. With this container, you can uh, configure your, your container. So here, we are creating a, a container. We disable all the automatic discovery mechanism of the container, and we add the bin uh, class uh, declaratively in an dec uh, explicit manner. So we can say add bin class and add package, etc., etc. And when you have finished with that, you can initialize your container. The uh, AC container, which is written by the initialize method, implements the instance interface. So the instance interface allow allows you to um, select bins from that type or the qualifier in the CDI container. So you can get your, uh, your bin like that with the container select, give a, a class, so you get the bin of the class by service, and that's it. You do your, your work, and you close the container. If we look at a code example, I'll try to show you some code, but uh, it's not sure that I have, I have time to, to show you for every feature, but here we have uh, an example. So we are uh, using the code we see in the slide. We are adding two bin class here. Here we are requesting the class service as a bin. We call the method say hello and and it works. Wow, it's very impressive. So if we look at the, at the two class we've got here, so it's, as, uh, it's a rather uh, simple bin. So this bin is in application scope. It injects uh, another bin and there is this uh, uh, this say hello method. The interesting part here is probably the add post construct uh, lifecycle callback. So you see that it's right to do a console in it. So we, uh, we can guarantee that we have all the feature in CDI available on SC. Okay. So yeah, like I said, in the initializer class, you have a lot of uh, feature to configure how the container will, uh, will uh, behave. So you can add the bin class. You can add extensions, so you can explicitly add CDI extension uh, in your uh, deployment. Same for inter for the same for interceptor, you can activate alternatives uh, or a stereotype for alternatives, etc., etc. And you also, you also have the add property method, which allows you to pass uh, implementation-specific parameter to your uh, uh, container. So if uh, something is not supported at spec level, you can still provide to weld or open web bins uh, specific parameter. OK. So uh, one of the issues we had by um, uh, adding uh, Java IC support was the fact that there are a lot of uh, library around, like uh, Apache Delta Spike, that defined CDI extension or CDI's bin providing feature. And all these uh, uh, library uh, were fought for CDI in Java EE. So CDI in Java EE with servlet, with uh, uh, all the context we can imagine, especially the servlet context. Uh, and, uh, the, sorry, the request context, which is uh, very used when you develop uh, a, CDI, a CDI application. You, have, you add your, uh, your bin to the request context. So uh, if you use this, those libraries in Java IC uh, out of the box, you will have a problem because there is no uh, servlet. It's not, uh, it's not guaranteed. So you, you won't have any... Uh, uh, request context, so you will have uh, a problem with the, uh, those third-party library. So I won't go through all the, the features here, but the request context is very important in CDI. I, um, I was talking about servlet, but it's also available on asynchronous uh, operation and uh, on other uh, uh, treatment, like the post-construct uh, callback. So it's important that we provide a way 
for uh, Java IC, CDI on Java IC for the uh, request context. So we added, uh, yeah, okay, I already explained that. So we have to support the request scope uh, for uh, Java IC. Uh, the question was to, uh, do we need to add another built-in context or uh, do we need to uh, rely on the existing one. The question was discussed a bit and we decided to support the existing one. So the question is, what about the other context in CDI? So application scoped, no problem. In Java SE, you have an application, so it's a lifetime of your uh, Java SE application. A dependent context, no problem as well because uh, it's dependent of the, of the bin that inject the dependent bin. So there is no, uh, no issue in Java IC. Conversation, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but you can imagine having a, a, a control because it's programmatically controlled, so you can do something in Java IC if you want, but it's, it would be a, a bit weird. And regarding session context, we decided to do nothing right now. So there is no support for session context in uh, Java IC. Uh, perhaps we will do that in a future release of CDI. Okay, so how do we activate uh, request context in CDI 2? So it's quite simple. We added an interceptor, provided the activation of the request context. But sometimes, if you don't like annotation, I heard that some guys don't like annotation. We provide also a programmatic way to do that. So you can inject, ah, inject, at inject, there is an annotation. But you can, you can uh, get access to this uh, built-in bin uh, without the at inject. But. So you can inject this built-in bin, the request context controller, and programmatically activate, do your job, and deactivate uh, the request context. So perhaps showing an example would be more uh, useful. So let's pretend that my, uh, my service to class is in request scoped. So it, it was designed to work. Oh, forget the. Okay. If I. If I launch my code like this, I will have an issue. Okay, so the error is uh, no active context for scope, request scope. So what I can do is here in my, uh, my service here, in the say hello. So I'm a bit lazy, so I will do it through the annotation. I can use the activate request context here and say, okay, you will have a request context here. And uh, normally it should Work. So I can keep my old uh, my service to uh, bin what that was that was designed for uh, uh, Java E and use it on Java C. So it was something uh, uh, quite interesting to uh, to have uh, backward compatibility on existing code. Okay. One of the the favorite feature in CDI is probably the events, uh, beside the injection, of course. Uh, and we had a lot of uh, requests regarding events. So probably, probably one of the oldest requests regarding events, I think it's the ticket number, one, number four on our JIRA, is the request of having ordering of events. So being able to say, okay, this observer will be called in first, this observer will be called in second position, etc., etc. So we, we, we discussed a lot, but we introduced this, <laughs> this uh, feature, even if uh, all the expert group members weren't very keen to, to go that way, but now it's here. There was also this, uh, this need of having asynchronous event, because uh, in CDI1, uh, all the events are called synchronously in the same, th in the same thread. Uh, we also needed a better programmatic solution to fire event because it was uh, not consistent with the 
programming model of CDI. So we'll see that. And uh, also for the, how to say, the portable extension part, having a better way to control observers by, for instance, deciding in an extension to disable the observers or create a new observer in the extension. So let's start with the simplest feature. So we added the possibility to order uh, observer by adding the add priority annotation uh, on an observer. So that uh, we needed for that that commands annotation uh, was uh, an update of the commands annotations specification because the add priority uh, only targeted type, I guess, so we weren't able to put a priority only on uh, class, and we needed to have it on, uh, on parameters. So it took a bit of time to, to, to get that, but we have it on uh, commons annotation web.3, I guess. So as we said in the Java e this uh, morning, uh, the lowest value is first, so it's more an at ordering that at priority annotation, but it's like that. Uh, if you don't have explicit priority, you, your uh, observer will be called in the middle range. So you have uh, the solution to make sure that your observer will be called uh, in the, at the beginning of the event resolution or at the end, because when you don't have a priority, they, are, they will be called in the middle range. And if you have the same priority on two observers, uh, you don't have any, any way to, to know the, the, the order. And uh, lastly, we didn't add uh, uh, ordering on asynchronous events. Uh, if you are interested on the reason, we can discuss that after. Uh, not sure I have time to, to see that right now. So, it looks like that. So, previously in CDI1, we didn't support the add priority. Now we can add the add priority annotation on an observers, and of course it will call the observers in the order of um, priority one, priority two, etc., etc. So it, it's quite uh, uh, out of the box. The good news is if you, um, if you are using or developing a portable extension, you know that portable extensions are based on the eventing system, so a portable extension consists uh, of uh, observing lifecycle event when the CDI uh, container is bootstrapping. You can use uh, those uh, at priority annotation uh, on this event. So you, we can imagine new, uh, uh, new usage, new use case uh, with this uh, priority for portable extension as well. One of the big part, the big uh, work we, uh, we did on the CDI2 was to introduce asynchronous event and do it uh, cleanly. So in CDI1, in the event interface, you only add the fire method. Uh, we introduce two new methods called fire async with two different signatures. Uh, the first one is only uh, having as a parameter, the, the, the event type, the type of the payload. And the second one uh, provides also the possibility to add uh, some kind of options to the, 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 the event firing. So in these options, uh, you can, for instance, add a specific feature of your implementation or provide uh, an executor to uh, have your uh, uh, your asynchronous process of the event uh, execute in this executor. So both of these uh, methods return a completion stage. So it's based on the Java 8 uh, new asynchronous API. And you can then use the, completion, the return the completion stage to continue the pipeline and do what you want with the, uh, with the future resolution of the, of, of the event. Okay, so when you want to uh, fire an event, it's as easy as that. So you inject uh, your event bin, 
And in your code somewhere, you call the fire async. You use your uh, own payload, whatever you want, your object. Your, uh, and on the other way, uh, when you want to consume the event, you use the at observes async annotation. You listen for the type payload, and all the events that were fired with the uh, payload type will be uh, uh, will trigger this observer. So it's quite uh, quite simple. So it's the same that we we had with uh, with CDI one. Uh, you only have to keep in mind that uh, uh, we separate synchronous synchronous event from asynchronous event. So when you use fire and sync, you won't trigger. Uh, at observes and uh, vice versa. So when you use uh, fire, you won't trigger it, uh, at observes as things. Th there are a lot of reasons for that. If you are interested, we can discuss that after. So uh, let's let's look at te at an example for that. So I have a, I think I have a test somewhere. Yeah. So by the way, my tests are using. Uh, uh, very convenient library called uh, uh, Weld GUnit. So it's a little extension for, for Weld, and it's an easy way to uh, bootstrap the container and with uh, the, the, the parameter you want and test your code. So here, my test, the important part is here. So I'm creating a payload, and I'm, use, oops, I'm using Fire Async. And after that, I'll complete the, the, the pipeline by uh, sending something to the console. Console, And I can also manage all the exceptions uh, that occur during the resolution by using the exceptionally method in the completion stage uh, API. So uh, if I try to launch, yeah, and let me just, just show you the observe bin. So I have two uh, two observers in this uh, bin. Uh, one that uh, will throw an exception, I think. Yeah, the, the second one is throwing an exception. The, the first one is only waiting five seconds in the th in the thread, and we will see that they will be resolved in an asynchronous way. So let's try to run this. I'm not sure that I test that before coming in <laughs> here. I think it, would, it should work. OK. So we, we have, yeah. And th there, are also, there is also uh, something interesting here. I forgot if I take the test. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, I removed this code. So, okay. So we see that we have uh, another, uh, we have a, a fork join pool uh, thread. So we are using the fork join pool executor service uh, when, we are, when we are in Java IC like this. If you are in Java IE, of course, we are getting a, a thread from the, the, the application server to uh, respect the Java IE contract. And you see that we didn't have to wait five seconds, and it was asynchronous. OK. Another point. Uh, when you, you want to use events outside, outside the programming model, that means when you are using events from non-CDI code or from uh, low-level CDI code, meaning portable extension or uh, uh, SPI, implementation you used to uh, you used to to use the fire event method in the bin manager uh, this method wasn't uh, very compliant and consistent with the way we fire event in a bin so we introduce uh, a get event method in a bin manager so it allows you to retrieve the event uh, of a sen of for a certain type and use fire async on f or fire the same way uh, you used it when you inject the, the event in your, uh, in your bin. I 
Another point that was totally uh, missing that was that were totally missing in the previous uh, CDI version was all the portable extension feature for the, the observer. So before CDI 2, we were only uh, able to observe uh, observer when they were registered, and, you, and that was all. And uh, create observer, but it was very hard to, uh, to create them. Uh, we enhanced the process observer method that is used in the portable extension, uh, allowing you to first veto an observer, so you can have an extension that uh, analyzes all the observer in the, in the code and decide for a given reason to uh, disable an observer. So, okay, this observer won't be triggered. Uh, or you can override the observer with the configure observer method, uh, allowing you to change, for instance, the, uh, the type of the observer, to change the priority of the observer, to even change the synchronicity or asynchronicity of the observer. So you, you can design uh, existing observer very uh, uh, precisely with the, the, this, uh, this method. So it I think it will uh, uh, help us to design very interesting feature in uh, our extension with that. Uh, also, the um, uh, observer method configurator is also available when you register an, obs an observer at the end of the, the bin discovery uh, process uh, when uh, the container is bootstrapping. Okay, so we also uh, work on enhancing interceptors in CDI. Uh, previously in CDI, uh, you had, I would say, a second class citizen bins that were the producer. So producer in CDI, our, uh, the producer feature is a way to uh, declare a method as a, as a producing bin, it's not very clear. If you don't own a class, you can use a method, create an instance of this class, and say, okay, this method, I annotated with add produces, and it's a way to create a bin of the type that is returned by the method. The problem is that the, those bins, producer are bins, uh, didn't have all the feature uh, that other bins had on CDI, especially uh, interceptor. So you weren't able to apply interceptor on those bins. So we introduced in CDI2 the interception factory SPI, allowing you to uh, apply interceptor, and create the proxy and stuff like that around the, the instance uh, when you uh, instantiate uh, an object in a producer, for instance, but, but it can be used in another use case if you want. So this uh, SPI uh, also provides you, uh, that's the little trick coming from, from the Open Web Beans team, uh, provides you a way to bypass some control uh, of the class that is used to ignore fi final method, which normally should, uh, be, uh, uh, should trigger an exception, but it's a new feature allowing you to say, okay, if, in fact, if the class cannot be, uh, cannot be used to create a proxy, we won't uh, uh, fire an exception, uh, through an exception, we will ignore the method. Uh, and you also have the possibility to configure uh, the type by adding annotation through the new annotated type configurator SPI that we provide in CI2, I will show, it, uh, show you after that. And you have the create intercepted instance, allowing you to take a normal, normal instance, an object that you just in instantiate, and apply interceptor on it. So you return uh, a new instance, but with all the feature. For instance, you can, for instance, you can use that to add, uh, um, I don't know, security feature or transactional. You can add the add transactional feature on your uh, uh, existing class without uh, adding the annotation to the source code, of course. It's a way to do that. 
So you can access the inter this interceptor factory when you declare a producer. So here we have a producer called create my class. So it's a producer defining a bin of type my class. Producer accept injection of parameter. So you can inject uh, over bin in the producer through the through the, the parameter list. So here we are injecting uh, a built-in bin, which is of type interceptor faction, uh, factory. We use the interceptor factory configure to add an annotation on the class, so we can configure the meta model, metadata of the, the, the class by adding the transactional annotation on the class and we create an intercepted instance uh, of, the, of my class, so we only call new my class, and we create this uh, intercepted. So that will create a bin my class with all uh, method uh, transactional. Quite easy. Before that, it wasn't uh, possible to do that. When you want, when we needed to do that, you have to create a custom bin. It was uh, far more uh, easy to, to create. Uh, you can also access the, inter the interception factory uh, from the bin manager. So you can use it, uh, for instance, when you create a custom bin, uh, and in certain use case. So it's not limited to producer. Uh, it can be used in a, in a way that uh, perhaps our user will discover and make us wonder why we, why we uh, introduce this feature that will break everything. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> and I think, I think we have a user that have a lot of imagination coming with a, a use case that we didn't imagine, and uh, every time it, it works, and it's very, uh, um, how to say, satisfying to see that we didn't foresee that it could be used that way, and. Uh, and it, uh, it adds a, a great value. So I, s I show you how to use um, uh, how to use this to add the add transactional at the class level, but you can also add the add transactional at method level. So it's more complicated, but imagine that you want to produce a bin uh, of a given type, but you don't want to have all the, the method uh, transactional, but only one, so you can do something like that. So you can get the configurator from the uh, annotated type configurator, from the, sorry, from the interception factory, so you, you, you call the configure method to uh, get the annotated, type, the annotated type configurator included. The, this annotated type configurator provides you access to all the methods, so you can access the method uh, of, uh, of the underlying class. You can find the class that is called here do something, and you can add the transactional annotation to this method. So it's doing the same that the previous one, but only adding a transactional on the, met on the method called do something. So, as you know, in CDI, we heavily use annotation. Uh, and we, we cannot only rely on annotation class. We need to have access and provide uh, annotations instance, because we are sometimes using uh, uh, members value of the annotation to make the distinction between two, between two annotations. So, uh, as the, unfortunately, the, the GDK doesn't provide uh, any, mean, any easy mean to create um, instance of an annotation, we provided an, help, an helper class in CDI1, which is called annotation literal, helping you to create uh, such instance. But it was a bit cumbersome. So the idea was to introduce built-in annotation literal uh, to, uh, to make sure that for a very uh, simple use case, user won't have to create them thems themselves. So we introduced this annotation literal for all scopes, qualifier typed, so mainly all the, the, bas the basic uh, annotation provided in CDI, but also 
annotations coming from other uh, specs, like like at inject. At inject is not CDI annotation, but uh, GSR three three O annotation, and it makes life a bit simpler. Uh, so you are doing something like that. When you need to have uh, an instance of the application scope, you only have to call this. Before that, you, will, you, you would have to uh, create a new class. So it could, it could have been an anonym, anonymous class, but uh, extending the annotation literal of application scope, etc. So it will make your uh, code uh, less verbose and lighter. And of course, if you have member in your annotation, it, we provide a way to uh, provide a value to your uh, annotation. Okay. So, uh, a more advanced feature, but I think it's quite important because uh, one of the, uh, one of the um, shinest feature in CDI, uh, which is not, not well known because uh, to know it, you have to use it, <laughs> It's the portable extension. And the portable extension uh, are nice, but sometimes when you want to create them, you have to create a lot of code, a lot of verbose code. So we work to, to make the, this creation easier and uh, generating more elegant code when you, when you have to, to create a, a portable extension. So for that, we introduce uh, the configurator's API uh, in CDI2, so you, you, you saw uh, one example with this uh, annotated type configurator in a few slides before. Uh, so you don't have any, any, any more excuse to uh, avoid coding uh, SPI and portable extension. Uh, so we provide this configurator for those SPI uh, elements. So I don't know how many of you already wrote portable extension. How many of you? Wow. Two. Great. So when you uh, create portable extension, uh, very often you have to uh, implement SPI in CDI. For instance, if you want to uh, create a custom bin, you will have to uh, implement the bin interface and add your own code to, the, to this bin interface, to this, to this um, version of bin interface. Uh, it can be very verbose, and uh, having some helpers could, uh, could make your life easier. So here we support the annotated type, bin observers method, bin attributes, injection point, and producer. So I think it's better to start with an example because uh, it will be easier to understand. Uh, imagine the, the use case. We have a legacy framework, and you don't own this framework, so you cannot change uh, the class. You only have the, the binary version. Uh, this framework uh, instantiates the, the some components and uh, it uses a config map to do that. So it, you have something like that in your uh, in this framework. What we'd like to do is to adapt this framework to the CDI programming model by adding the capacity, the possibility to inject this map. So so instead of uh, having to call this, uh, uh, this method set config, we want to have the equivalent with the at inject on this method. So you can solve this in CDI 1, 2. For that, you will have to create two classes. Uh, you will have to use the injection target factory. And do you have to add a producer for the map, of course, because if you want to inject a map, you, have, you need to have a, a bin uh, for the map type. And what you want, that's, that's what I say, you want to create an annotated type that simulates simulate this. That means I'd like to have something that pretend that I have an at inject on this class. But of course, I cannot change the class. So I need to use the Meta model SPI of CDI to add this uh, annotation. So in CDI 1, one, two, one, 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 one zero and one, one, two, I would like to, to do that like this. So I need to create, uh, no, I need to, in my code, 
uh, use uh, an injection target factory. This injection target factory will use a custom annotated type called legacy annotated type. I will give, I will pass to this uh, legacy annotated type the original annotated type from the legacy class. And I will uh, create the injection target and inject all the components in it. Uh, the verbose part is probably the legacy annotated type. So for that, I, I will have to create two classes. The legacy annotated type, which will, uh, uh, which will decorate an existing uh, legacy annotated type, but adding uh, the at inject on the set config method. That's why I'm doing here. So I'm getting all the list of all method in the original annotated type, looking for the set config method, and I'm adding the, uh, I am replacing the method by my own inject, injected method, uh, annotated method. So I have to create the injected method, and the injected method uh, will implement the annotated method, and the, the difference is that when I will be asked for the annotation, I will say there is and at inject on the method. So here I show you both uh, the two classes, and I remove a lot of code in both class, uh, around uh, 16 methods, uh, 8 methods in each class. So it was very verbose. It was not complicated code, but not very elegant. And uh, uh, I think that a lot of users uh, were saying, uh, I'm doing something wrong because uh, it, cannot be <laughs> it cannot be that way. So. In CDI 2, we solve this uh, uh, with no class. So in the original code, we create the injection target factory. We can configure the annotated type in the injection target factory. During this configuration, we can uh, have a stream uh, on all the method. We can look for the method uh, with the set config name and we can add the inject, uh, the at inject annotation on it like this. This uh, configured annotated type will be used to uh, resolve the all the injection point and uh, other stuff like interceptor. So when we create the injection target and when we call the, at in the inject method, it will detect the at inject uh, annotation that we added programmatically on the meta model, and it will be it will do the injection. So here we 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 have provided an easier way to adapt legacy non CDI code to the CDI programming model. Okay, so I finish with all the feature before everybody uh, falls asleep. Uh, if you want to play today with uh, CDI two, you have. Free solution. You can go for GlassFish 5. So now CDI2 is in GlassFish 5. I think that I hope that there might be some. Yeah, there is a specific branch. Uh, as you as I as you saw, you can use CDI on Java IC uh, with well free. Uh, or if you want only to play with CDI2, but in a Java e, uh, 7 environment, you can have a, a, how to say a preview. Uh, so a version of, uh, of CDI uh, by patching Wildfly, so you can replace uh, only CDI in Wildfly having a Java E7 application server with a CDI2 uh, version. So uh, we provide, uh, Weld provide a patch to do that. So if you want to, uh, to play in a CDI with CDI SC, it's quite simple. Uh, you will have, have to add this to your, uh, to your uh, uh, pom.xml. And if you want to patch uh, Wildfly, you have to download the patch. And uh, I suggest that if you want to do that, take a picture. You have to, to use the JBoss CLI uh, uh, command line uh, tool uh, to apply the patch. So it will replace the implementation of CDI in uh, Wildfly 10 by uh, uh, Wildfree. And that's it for me. Do you have questions? Yeah?
provides method. Yeah? Uh, there is no provides annotation in CDI. Or, or, or I slept a long time. <laughs> in fact, the, wh what I show, yeah, it's quite advanced. So if you didn't already develop uh, extension or do some, something like that, it can be confused. But it's to say that you, you have easier way to adapt existing code that you don't own to add a feature on it. So it could be interceptor, it could be injection point, or uh, other stuff like lifecycle callback uh, in an easier and elegant way. It was possible before, but it's very easy now. And uh, it will uh, help, I think, I hope it will help third party to, to create portable extension and uh, add CDI support to existing framework. Another questions? Okay, thank you.